And I can't think of anybody better to start you on the journey than the speaker that we've planned for you for today. Daryl Ray is CEO of Cheskin Added Value. He has spent the last 25 years working on the front lines of innovation with the world's top corporations, helping them understand their customers, their needs, and their experiences, and marrying the best of design, strategy, and market research into an enduring business proposition. He's been featured in Malcolm Gadwell's New York bestseller, Blink. Mr. Ray is one of the America's top design strategists. His mission is to help companies create products, services, and brands that serve both the consumer and the bottom line, and to build value by generating experiences that are meaningful to consumers and profitable to producers, shareholders, and investors. He and the Cheskin teams that he leads work in close collaboration with global organizations, including Microsoft, Pfizer, and, and the likes of Del Monte Foods, to bring product and service innovation to fruition. In his book, Make Meaning, How Successful Businesses Deliver Meaningful Experiences, Mr. Ray pushes the envelope of innovation design, business strategy, marketing, and customer experience. At the heart of his work is a clear-cut and simple message of making meaning through relentless attention to people you serve. It is my privilege and honor to introduce to you Mr. Daryl Ray. Daryl? Thank you, Dean Reddy. And thank you to the faculty and to the uh, administration and to you students who have so warmly welcomed me and give me the honor of uh, speaking to you on this, your important day. First off, congratulations. My hat goes off to you, uh, class of 2009, for the incredible accomplishment that, that you, have, uh, you have made. We all know that you didn't do this by yourself, that the uh, friends, family, and community that uh, supported you along the way are, are absolutely critical. But you should absolutely stand tall knowing that you've graduated from one of the best universities and best programs in the world. And that's truly a blessing. So congratulations. I spent yesterday traveling here, and like most days uh, flying, uh, traveling is, is not always an easy thing to, to do, and I had a lot of flight delays. And uh, while I was at the airport, I, I met a, a business associate of mine, and he asked me where I was going. I said I was coming to Weatherhead to give the commencement speech. And his face went blank. Okay, he said, but this is the worst economy in our lifetime. You know, how on earth are you going to summon any optimism for these poor people? What were you thinking? You agreed to do this? And, uh, uh, and then he said, I'm going to Maui, you know, I've got extra room in my condo. You can just change, change flights. Come with me, go to Maui, we'll play golf, you know, we'll drink fruity cocktails out of coconuts, it'll, it'll be great. And uh, he, he said that tongue in cheek, but I actually was sitting there thinking about it, kind of weighing it. Could, could, was it. Would it be credible to contract swine flu on a Saturday before commencement, you know? I, um, I'm not a hard sell with, uh, on, on Maui. I started my first business there right after I graduated, like, like you. And uh, I'm thinking, well, are my surfboards still in my old friend's garage? And uh, it's been a long time since I had one of those fruity cocktails. Um, uh, so after considering a long moment, I, I just said and snapped out of it and said, you know what? I'm really excited about uh, coming because I actually think this is one of the best times ever to be graduating. I think it's also one of the best times to be graduating from a school of management. And I honestly believe that. And I believe that from the perspective of, of serving, uh, having my organization serve hundreds of, of major uh, companies around the world. Um, why do I think that? I think that because all types of organizations right now, and I mean manufacturing companies, service companies, for-profit, non-profit, all of them are really screwed up. Okay? They are really stressed now in a way they haven't been with this economy. And they know they need you. For the first time in a long time, there's a real significant demand for change. And although they might not admit it to you in the interviews that you might have with them, they know that they, uh, that they need you. Um, that's, a big, uh, that's a really big opportunity for you. So they need your ideas your passion, and your energy, because they need change. Most of my clients 
have reacted very severely to the economy, and I'm sure you're reading about that. Um, and the way they're reacting has cut deeply into their capacity to innovate. They've laid off tens of thousands of employees. Intellectual property, wisdom, best practices have just walked out the door. Meanwhile, the rules of business are changing. As Dean Reddy uh, alluded to there, issue, issues like sustainability, corporate social responsibility, transparency, design thinking, things that weren't even on the agenda a couple years ago are front and center and deemed critical. And wisely, Weatherhead, I think, is doing a good job of keeping itself at the forefront of, of many of these is issues. Another thing that's changing are consumers and customer expectations. How each of us define value is changing. You know, your purchase patterns have been disrupted. You might have noticed that. You're thinking about what's important, what's worth spending on differently than what you might have uh, a year or two ago. Most of us just don't want more stuff. We have plenty of stuff. We have garages full of stuff. And most of us are starting to think about what, what we want to acquire, what experiences we want to have that are really meaningful to us, that really matter. And that's a really big shift. I think I, I call that a shift toward meaningful consumption, that people are thinking now about how they're spending their money and how they're engaging and using their time in a different way. The world is also changing. Organizations need change agents who are part of the emerging world. And markets also need young people like you to start businesses, to, to take the risk. Because honestly, you'll never have a time where you have less to risk than you have right now. You know, I look back on, on starting a business when I was your age and just go, I didn't have anything to lose. Um, and uh, I encourage you to take that, uh, that jump. So what you are is the change agents of the new world. You are of this new world. And not necessarily encumbered by the old and the former common wisdom. And because I believe so strongly in the opportunities that are in front of you and the importance of what you bring to the economy, that is why I'm here today, not getting sunburned in Maui, and uh, why if you uh, see me in the airport lounge tonight, I'll be drinking a big fruity rum drink, and I welcome you to join me if you're, uh, if you're taking off. So in the short time that I have left, I'd like to share some advice with you about how to take advantage of the opportunities created by this new world. I'll give you about th three or four ideas based on several million miles of, of, of flying around and burning through uh, uh, a lot of too many suitcases and uh, helping many of the world's best corporations and some of the worst organizations as well. My first piece of advice is this. Don't try to be like them. Don't try to fit in. I mean, all of you, when you join organizations, there's a natural tendency to be impressed with the cultures of the organizations and to want to become acculturated, to want to, want to fit in, to want to take an, a, a, a mindset of an apprentice. And while that seems like a reasonable thing to do, if you actually look at the organizations you might be joining, what I think you'll see is they're actually challenged right now. You know, if the organization was really optimal and it was the best organization in its class in the world, becoming acculturated might be the right thing to do. But that's not what they need right now. Most of them are, are suffering, and those that aren't suffering will probably be suffering soon. So don't lose the opportunity that you have to think and act new and different, to be different, to be a force for change, to be a force for good. You know, there's a tremendous advantage of, of playing and being an outsider. As a consultant in organizations, I'm a professional outsider. And I tell you, it allows you to ask questions that insiders can't ask. You can ask the stupid, obvious questions that reveal the big breakdowns. And so holding yourself and how you think about yourself within the organizations that you serve as an outsider will allow you to do that, will allow you to see things that others can't necessarily see. So resolve to be different and resolve to not fitting in. 
Another tip would be to not necessarily believe them. You know, if their mental models or the established mental models for how their business works were so good, they would really be uh, operating uh, at an incredible level, and they're not now. So the models that, that are driving their approach aren't the only models, and they're certainly not the best models. They're just the models that are e existent. You know, and speaking my, about my, my own company, you know, there are so many parts of what we do as, a, as an organization. I'm proud of it, and we do, we do, I think, a very good job. We get a lot of uh, acclaim for our, our particular work, but there's lots of aspects of our work that, and, and processes that were defined five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. I mean, my company's 63 years old. So there's a lot of, of, of stuff that just shows up in the culture. And I gotta tell you, we're not necessarily even aware of that. So having someone new, having, hiring new young people with bright minds who are assertive like you, when they ask, why are we doing that way? The answer usually is, gee, I don't know. We've always done it that way. So don't necessarily believe them. So if you don't believe them, who should you believe? Well, the obvious answer is you need to have confidence to believe in yourself. You, right now, are absolutely capable, as you are walking out the door, to creating new models for improving the operation of, of businesses. You don't need to be around five years at the company that you're, that you're joining or, or working at. You don't need to ask permission. You don't need to be asked to, to, to do it. You just need to hold yourself accountable for having a rigorously informed point of view. And what that means is it assumes that you care, that your lights are on, that you're paying attention, that you're engaged, and you're applying yourself. Secondly, that you develop a cogent argument based on that truth. And the third is that you have the courage to speak up and speak out. Okay? That's what organizations need of you now. You need to be a change agent. This is a great time given that. And Weatherhead has given all you need right now. So don't be shy. Don't wait for uh, to be asked. Just assert yourself. Okay. At the same time, and this is the tricky part, you have to have some humility because you know what? You're going to get some things wrong. You're going to make mistakes. People are afraid to mistake. You make mistakes. You make a mistake, so what? You're going to learn from that. Everyone makes mistakes at all levels of the organization. So don't be afraid of, of that. Embrace that as a, as a new, uh, uh, a big possibility, but have some humility about that. Now, I've gotten a lot of things wrong in my life. I've made misjudgments, ignored data, and uh, a lot of obvious things. One of the fun parts about being a designer and a, and a researcher is that I get to learn about all different kinds of categories. So, you know, I know all kinds of obscure information and can tell you why spam is the way it is, or cheese whiz is the way it is, or how supercomputers work, or financial services or healthcare. We work across many, many different categories, which is fun. One of those categories is, is home appliances, and, and I've done a lot of work in vacuum cleaners. And I, part of this I just got, got wrong. Um, you know, vacuum cleaners are, uh, I think, are, are really great. And my, you know, the, the, the insight that I would share with you, and especially you men, this is important. This might be the, the most important nugget that you get out of your Weatherhead experience. Vacuum cleaners are not an appropriate gift for Christmas, <laughs> not appropriate gift for, for Valentine's Day or birthdays, right? And uh, that's something that uh, uh, a lot of us just don't, uh, don't get until uh, uh, too, too late there. This guy over here is asking, what about, what about power tools? <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, power tools, Wi-Fi, you know, uh, routers, doesn't, doesn't work, okay. So have some humility. You're going to get it wrong. Next thing is don't be lazy. Okay, I know your mom told you this. Your professors have told you this. You know, the time to be really rigorous and critical in your thinking isn't, isn't left in school. You actually need to bring that with you, and that's one of the things that you need now more than ever. Life is really messy. 
Business problems are the same way. Businesses are full of wicked problems, nasty problems, complex problems, and it really, they really need thought. And if you want to bring innovation to a company, you really need to, to do that, to uh, understand just how hard innovation is. Why is innovation so hard? Because innovation is about change. People don't like to change. The only thing that, that resists change more as, an, uh, 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 as a person is a group of people, right? I think you've all probably experienced that. So you need to have powerful and persuasive arguments to make change in the organizations that you're going to, to join or to uh, even, even start. And you do that by embracing the complexity out there, pushing yourself to be rigorous, thinking holistically about the problem, redefining the problem in a bigger way, and giving yourself the luxury of time to truly synthesize the data that you have. Out there in, in the business world, most people go from data collection to solving problems. And there's this thing missing in the middle called synthesis and design. And that's something that you don't want to necessarily lose sight of. So don't jump into problem solving. Model the problem first. Explode it. Really tear into it, because that's where innovation really can, can happen. Yes, you can make in, in, uh, incremental innovation happen without that by just taking a really straightforward assessment of the data. But the big ideas, the big opportunities for change are much larger than that. Buckminster Fuller said, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. And that's really your, your challenge here. And then once you model the problem, model the solution. Don't start solving the problem. Modeling the solution. Iterate over and over again. Challenge yourself to think systematically, to think more intelligently, develop a unique interpretation than other people in your company or your competitors might, might have. And that's what design thinking is all about. Okay? It does it so well, and that's why your faculty is uh, committed to bringing in design thinking into the, the, the practices of, of business, which I, which I really applaud them for. It's about applying creativity and rigor to the way we think about identifying and solving problems. And that's what I'd like to see a lot more of. You know, everyone points out Apple as a, as a great example of a company that, that does products that are both uh, inspiring and, um, and, uh, and, and very high quality. Apple is a client of ours. We work with them on, on designing their retail experience. But, you know, it's amazing when you, when you look at them. They're not just, you know, they, they didn't approach making a better iPod by making a better MP3 player or designing a phone to make a better phone, they thought more holistically, they modeled the problem in a different way, and they addressed the digital convergence that all of us are, are experiencing with entertainment and communications and solved a different problem, a bigger problem, and came up with an iPhone that, that blew the market away. Okay, that's not being just creative. That is applying the rigor and the tools that you've learned here at Weatherhead to the, their processes. The other thing they do that, that really impresses me is that you know, most, most product uh, designs happen. There's usually two or three, excuse me, there'll be um, a dozen concept sketches in 2D that designers will, will produce. And from that, they'll design some crude models, maybe uh, uh, three or four physical models. And from the physical models, they'll design and create one working prototype that's very expensive before they commit to uh, uh, engineering and production tooling. That's how it works, and that process takes weeks. You know how many working prototypes Apple created for the iPhone before they settled on it? Over 100, okay? So they're not lazy, okay? When you look at, 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 at companies that do things so well and have this elegant simplicity to their offer that really resonates with you, um, it's because they made it look easy by implying the intelligence and rigor that you know how to do now with your skills. And lastly, don't forget why we're here, okay? If I've learned anything in my career, it's that business exists to serve human beings. And I don't mean this in some kind of abstract, philosophical, new age, spiritual way. I mean that businesses maximize profits 
at the expense, the, the businesses that maximize profit at the expense of satisfying the needs and desires of customers ultimately fail, right? You need to remember that maximizing shareholder value is a byproduct of producing value for customers. Your job, regardless of your job title, when you work, go out to the workforce, it will be about value creation. That's really what, the, that's what you bring to organizations. Ask yourself, what am I doing to produce value for human beings? So the only question is, what level of value will you settle for? You know, will you settle to produce products, experiences, services that are functional, maybe function in an elegant way? You know, can it be uh, something higher? Is it elegant usability? Or will you strive to delight or even blow the socks of your customers by creating something that really does touch and move them? So that's my question to you. Personally, I only have time to work on products and invest my heartbeats, of which we all have a limited and finite amount, into products that really do create meaning. You know, I, I want to create products and services that people love, that inspire them, that express and celebrate what they truly find meaningful in the world and in their lives. I want to aim high and build organizations that know who they are, what they stand for, and demonstrate that in authentic ways. I want to see more companies that have a soul, principal companies that, if they disappeared, I would actually care. I mean, how many companies can you think of that if they just went away, you'd really miss, okay? And you'll come up with some and ask yourself, why aren't I working in one of those? Or why aren't I creating one of those, okay? Because you can. All it takes is your assertion that that's what you want to do. So I hope you want to aim high, too. I know that if we focus on creating meaning and meaningful value for others, that we will not only make a difference in the world, that we'll, we will change the world and contribute positively, we'll also create meaning for ourselves, that we'll get more satisfaction out of what we do. So graduates, you have a unique opportunity to make meaning in what other, uh, whatever form you choose. The world needs you to bring change, and they need you to bring change now. So take what you have learned, here and make the biggest and best change that you can. Thank you very much.